Welcome. If you are new, please like, share, subscribe, comment, and click the notification bell for updates of my new video. The persistent reflux of gastric contents into the esophagus is referred to as gastroesophageal reflux disease. It is thought to be associated with a weak or incompetent lower esophageal sphincter that allows reflux to occur, the irritant effects of the refluxate, and decreased clearance of the refluxed acid from the esophagus after it has occurred. In most cases, reflux occurs during transient relaxation of the esophagus. Delayed gastric emptying also may contribute to reflux by increasing gastric volume and pressure with greater chance for reflux. Esophageal mucosal injury is related to the destructive nature of the refluxated and the amount of time it is in contact with the mucosa. Acidic gastric fluids pH 4.0 or particularly damaging. The gastroesophageal reflux normally is cleared and neutralized by esophageal peristalsis and salivary bicarbonate. Decreased salivation and salivary buffering capacity may contribute to impaired clearing of acid reflux from the esophagus. Risk factors that can aggravate acid reflux and over the period of time it can cause GERD. Smoking. Having large meals or eating late at night. Consuming triggered foods like fatty foods or fried foods. Going to sleep shortly after having meals. Drinking alcohol or coffee or soda. Taking medications without consulting a doctor. Common signs and symptoms of GERD. Pyrosis. Burning sensation in the esophagus. Dyspepsia. Indigestion. Dysphagia or odinophagia. Pain on swallowing. Regurgitation of food or sour liquid. Hypersalivation. Esophagitis. Heartburn. Usually after eating, which might be worst at night. Chest pain. Nausea. Bloating, gas and belching. Let us continue with the common signs and symptoms. Sensation of a lump in your throat. Certain food intolerance. Chronic cough. Laryngitis. If acid reflux occur during nighttime, one can experience. Disrupted sleep. Chronic cough. New or worsening asthma. Laryngitis. For the chest pain symptom, the symptom may mimic those of a heart attack. Assessment and diagnostic findings. Diagnostic testing may include an endoscopy or barium swallow to evaluate damage to the esophageal mucosa. Ambulatory 12 to 36 hour esophageal pH monitoring is used to evaluate the degree of acid reflux. Bilirubin monitoring Bilitec, is used to measure bile reflux patterns. Exposure to bile can cause mucosal damage. See Bilitec system for more details. Management. Nursing interventions. Management begins with teaching the patient to avoid situations that decrease lower esophageal sphincter pressure or cause esophageal irritation. The patient is instructed to eat a low-fat diet. To avoid caffeine, tobacco, beer, milk, foods containing peppermint or spearmint, and carbonated beverages. To avoid eating or drinking two hours before bedtime. To maintain normal body weight, to avoid tight-fitting clothes. To elevate the head of the bed on 6 to 8 inch, 15 to 20 cm, blocks, and to elevate the upper body on pillows. Medical interventions. If reflux persists, antacids or H2 receptor antagonists, such as famotidine, pepsid, nizatidine, axid, or ranitidine, zantac, may be prescribed. Proton pump inhibitors, medications that decrease the release of gastric acid, such as lansoprazole, prevacid, rebeprazole, asifex, esomeprazole, nexium, omeprazole, prilosec, and pantoprazole protonics may be used. However, these products may increase intragastric bacterial growth and the risk of infection. In addition, the patient may receive prokinetic agents, which accelerate gastric emptying. These agents include bethanicol, uricoline, domperidone, motilium, and metoclopramide, reglan. Because metoclopramide can have extrapyramidal side effects that are increased in certain neuromuscular disorders, such as Parkinson's disease, it should be used only if no other option exists, and the patient should be monitored closely. Surgical interventions. If medical management is unsuccessful, surgical intervention may be necessary. 
Surgical management involves a Nissen fundoplication, this is the wrapping of a portion of the gastric fundus around the sphincter area of the esophagus, see figures, the before and after surgery. A Nissen fundoplication can be performed by the open method or by laparoscopy. Thank you for watching. If you want to study nursing anywhere, please subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for updates of my new video. If any concerns, just comment below.